We will now continue to our talk tonight. Our topic for tonight is who is Jesus Christ? Brothers and sisters, do you know who is Jesus Christ? Is? Some said that Jesus Christ is a Messiah, Jesus Christ is a prophet. But now our speaker tonight will discuss who really is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Our speaker for tonight is a missionary from Philippines. And not with that, he is our own uh, Paris Christ. Not with that, Father Pedro. Hello, how are you? Good evening, Mr. Sanan. For the Visaya, the Agadis of Montalado, and good evening to our, uh, to talk about a couple of things. Thank you very much. So, for tonight, we are going to reflect. We are going to study. And we are going to bring, uh, to be able to understand who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Are you ready? Let's, uh, let's talk, let Brother Barry point out God's love. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little of uh, uh, um, impact. So God's love is, I would like to focus on creation. So creation means harmony, means peace, means love. If you try to look at, at the, the creation, it's perfect. And to be able to understand the creation, God creates human being. So we are part of this creation. It's beautiful, isn't it? Unfortunately, this world, this creation deteriorated when man decided to turn away from God. At that point, the life of human being is missing. If we will try to observe or we'll try to look on ourselves, if we commit sin, are we happy? No. And God, for God so the world, because God loves us very much, to be able to return to His image with His God's love, he said, he said. Okay, so Jesus Christ. If I ask you, who is Jesus Christ to you? So I think we have a lot of answers to be, an to be answered. Okay, can I ask somebody? Good Michelle, okay? Come on, Grace. He's our Redeemer. Jesus Christ is Redeemer. Okay, from this. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> so, for this point, to get involved with someone in a personal way, we have to see and understand his background and take time to know where the person is coming from. So, his text involved to someone personally. So if you have friends, diva, for husband and wife. Okay, before you get engaged, you have time to know to each other. Okay? You start getting to know each other. Isn't it? And even our friends, and even our parents, even our brothers and sisters. You have to know them personally to be able to develop a good relationship. So, today we are talking about Jesus Christ. How? Who is Jesus Christ? So, from the history, and we will talk about the two dimensions, Jesus Christ of history and Jesus Christ of faith. So, 
Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem of the Virgin named Mary. So this is the story of incarnation. It means that the, the, from the, the, the text that I read about the or God, so that the world that He gave us is on His side. And this is the time, it's the promise to the people of Israel, and not also to the people of Israel, but to all of us. The promise of eternal life. We were thinking about what is eternal life. Eternal life is love. And that is the love of God. And we can also experience this eternal life here on earth through the way of our Lord Jesus. Okay, so let's, let's continue with this uh, history of Jesus. Eh? So this is facts. And also if you will go to Israel. How many are you going to Israel? Have we made some of this one day? So this is true the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ lived with his people in Israel. So Jesus is a Jew. And he grew up as a young carpenter in Nazareth. So this is about the our tradition, or because in our faith, in our Catholic faith, there are three traditions. First is uh, the, 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 uh, our, our teaching, sorry. We base our faith in the Bible. We base our faith in the sacred tradition. And we base our faith in the sacred magisterium. So, all of us we are talking about here is based on the Bible. So, he grew up as a young carpenter in Nazareth. He never more than 100 50 kilometers from his house and he did not have a school like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. He did not have army like Alexander the Great and Majesty either. So I would, I would like to share you uh, a poem. This is uh, composed by one of the great poets. His name, her name is Lyle C. Rawlings. He said, the greatest man in history is Jesus. He had no servants, yet they called him master. He had no degree in his studies, yet they called him teacher. He had no medicines, yet they called him healer. He had no army, yet kings feared him. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. He did not live in a castle, yet they called him Lord. He ruled no nations, yet they called him King. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in the tomb, yet he lives today. My dear brothers and sisters, what I'd like to share to you tonight is the Christ who is, hang on, hang on, it's God. The second part is Christ of faith. So Jesus forgave sins. This is the story, and I think I would like to emphasize this, eh? that our Lord Jesus Christ forgives. And I want, to use, I want to use the text from the Bible so that explain how Jesus loves. Okay, so this is the part where the woman caught in adultery. I think we know the story that the woman has been used by the Pharisees and the elders to trap Jesus. So the verdict for the woman is, this is based on John uh, chapter 9 that when when according to the law of Moses that this woman caught an adultery was being stoned to death so imagine this woman caught in adultery 
Imagine, put yourself into this woman. Okay? If we commit sin. Okay? How many sins that we committed? How many sins? So, all of my natural brothers and sisters, are you faithful to your wife and to your husband? Husband, you will think about this. Even though I don't have wife, but all of us sometimes we betray one another. And when we commit a sin, our tendency is to hide. And this is the situation of this woman caught in adultery full of fear. Not only to the husband and wife, but when we committed sin, a grievous sin, we are like this woman, afraid, alone, and nowhere to go. He is facing death. Okay, so what happened? They keep questioning Jesus and straightened up and said, Let what Jesus said, let anyone among you go without sin to be first to throw stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, and one by one, beginning from the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. So they look at this. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemn you? Jesus said, No, so, no one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the effect of Easter, my dear friends, as we celebrate Sunday, Easter Sunday today. It reminded us that God is giving us new life to our Lord Jesus to experience to be forgiven. So at the same time, our Christian life is calling us to forgive. And that's what we learn and hear and focus for Christ. Okay? So this, if you see all these people around you, they living their life to look after you because they know Jesus. They learn about Jesus. Okay? So let's hear about it. So Jesus this entire life is a defeat into the cross. Jesus revealed his true identity and we will know Jesus through the cross. Okay, let's focus on the cross of Jesus. The cross of Jesus is in the time of Jesus is the form of humiliation. Shame. If you will be crucified in the time of Jesus, you are the most hated. You are not criminal. But Jesus changed the meaning of the cross. What is the meaning of the cross? Salvation. It does not reflect on Good Friday. The Good Friday is reminding us that Jesus Christ gave himself to take away the sins of the world. So what does it mean? That each and every one of us, every sin that we have, is dying with Jesus. It means this is the way we change our life. For example, let me give you an example. How many of you are uh, 
issue and anger. Easily to be upset. How many are we that issue in patience? Particularly in your work. See How do you practice patience if your boss is like you? How do you practice patience if you are working with somebody that always upset you? Do you love this people? The answer is Jesus. Because on the resurrection, my dear friends, as we celebrate today, it's about the empty tomb. The empty tomb that representing our hearts. The hearts that full of darkness. And now Jesus open and release a new light in us. So at this time, we are joining brothers and sisters. That's what I said. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus, you will love one another. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus, you will pray and connect with Him. So how is our prayer life? How do we connect with Jesus? It's like when we start loving, or when we start uh, courting, eh? I think we start with the communication. During the old days, love letter. How many of you has used love letters? I will admit I did. <laughs> when I was in the younger age. So, the technology evolves. Text, messengers, there's a lot of application that we can use to communicate to be able to understand, to be able to know the person you have to talk to her or him over and over again to be able to know so that's great to be able to know Jesus second thing, to be able to know Jesus is we need this what is this? yes father, it's a book <laughs> But this book, what's written in this book, is tells about the story of God. The story about Jesus. The story about of God's love to us. Third day, we will know Jesus to each and every one of us. Why? Because we are part of this church. And the, heart and, the, the, and the head of this church is our Lord Jesus Christ. It means we are. What's that? We are who next day. This is the problem. We put barriers between one another. And when we put barriers, how can we do it? How can we see the beauty between us? So when you take these barriers, you can see the beauty in your enemies. That's what Jesus said. What is that Jesus said? Love your Love your Love your neighbor or your neighbor. It's correct, huh? The most challenging to us, what Jesus said, love your enemies. And how can we do that? It's impossible. I tell you, it's impossible. But if you believe and you have a personal 
relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus Christ defeated all the sinfulness of this world. So if you are connected to Jesus, it, your enemy is the same. You can say, I am your enemy. Okay. okay, that's enough activity, okay? Let's close our eyes, please. Close our eyes. This will be the last uh, part of my talk, okay? Close your eyes. I would like to invite you to think about these people you hate. These people who hurt you. And think about Jesus Christ beside you. Whatever face of Jesus you are thinking about, but remember that Jesus is with you. Jesus Christ is embracing you. Jesus Christ is teaching you what to do. Jesus Christ is telling you, I love you. I want you to give up. I want you to let go of your anger. I want you to love. I want you to love this person in front of you. Because I died for you. I will give you life. Embrace me. And I will give you a new life. And that is Jesus who loves you. Glory be to the Father to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and it shall be.